Great morning, great morning, great morning, Houston, downtown, midtown, third ward, fifth ward, those of you listening in the car at 102.5 FM. Great morning to you that are tapped in through our free KMAZ app. And great morning to you that are listening on our website at www.amazing1025fm.org. I'm Amanda Sapp here at Amazing 102.5 FM, your do good through good station where we're changing lives one listener at a time. Guys, I cannot wait to share with you who I have in the studio with me who is doing an amazing things and amazing ways. Please turn your volume all the way up. Let me introduce to you who I have in the studio with me. She is a board certified medical doctor and the author of three best-selling books, Goodbye Lupus, Goodbye Autoimmune Disease, and Green Smoothie Recipes to Kickstart Your Health and Healing. She has been featured in documentaries like Disease Reversal, Hope, and Eating You Alive, and television shows like The Home and Family Show, and has been on the front cover of Vegan Health and Fitness Magazine three times, including the cover of Fit Over Fit, Fit Over 40. She graduated from Carnegie Mellon University with honors for genetic research in leukemia and neurobiology, was a graduate of the Temple University School of Medicine, was chief resident at UCLA Harbor Residency, and has published case studies in reversing lupus, nephritis, you have to say this word nephritis. for me, nephritis yep. with her nutrition protocol, and is a sole autoimmune professor for the plant-based nutrition certification from Cornell University. She would consider herself an empathic. She is passionate. She is a lupus conqueror. She is Dr. Brooke Goldner, welcome to Amazing 102.5 FM. Thank you so much. Great morning to you. <laughs> Great morning. <laughs> So glad to have you here in the studio with us today. And I know I mentioned quite a few things, but for someone who is just hearing about you for the very first time, tell us just a little bit more about you. Oh, goodness gracious. So before I was ever an author or a doctor, I was a patient. Mm -hmm. uh, at 16 years old, I was dealing with arthritis and rashes and just not feeling very well. And one day I had just this terrible migraine. I felt so sick. My parents took me to the hospital. And they diagnosed me with lupus, which is an autoimmune disease. And we found out in the hospital that not only do I have this disease that was causing the joint pain and the rashes, but I was in kidney failure and I didn't know it. Mm. So I had a kidney biopsy. And within a few days, we're with a nephrologist who literally told me I was 16 years old, sitting in the doctor's office with my mother and my grandmother, who's a Holocaust survivor. She came here to this country to give us you know, a chance to start over as a refugee. And we're sitting there and he says to them, she has such severe kidney failure that mm. she has maybe six months to live if mm. we don't do something really aggressive. So it was this kind of shocking thing where I went from aches and pains and rashes mm. to really facing my own mortality at 16. Mm -hmm. And it was really devastating. I mean, I had to be on experimental treatments, which everyone wants that, right? But right. it was death or dialysis or experimental treatments. So you know, we went with that and it turned out to be years of chemotherapy designed to shut off my immune system. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they thought maybe if they chopped me like, you know, when your phone stops working, you just reboot it, say a prayer, turn it back on and mm -hmm. somehow it's working. Mm -hmm. They tried to do that with my immune system using heavy doses of chemotherapy. So it did save me. I'm here today. Uh, but it was excruciating and for my whole family. Mm -hmm. um, but I made it. And what I learned really was that um, really what I was made of. And I always tell my patients this, that your hardest times teach you your superpowers, mm -hmm. right? And if I could get through high school and get through chemotherapy and all these things, I could do anything. And so I really held on to that. And I had a beautiful family mm -hmm. who taught me that too, that lupus wasn't who I was. Mm -hmm. It was something I had to live with while I became all the things I was meant to be. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, I got through high school. Uh, my last chemotherapy was a week before I went to college. I graduated top of my class. I got a scholarship to Come my on. college. Yes, I did. <laughs> Chemo gives you a lot of time to read, you know, um, but uh, but I, I really followed my dreams aggressively. Mm -hmm. I and, mean, you know, I mentioned I did honors research at Carnegie Mellon. I wasn't supposed to be allowed to. They said, you can't do that until you're a junior. Mm -hmm. And freshman year, I just kept showing up at the labs every day. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know how much time I have. Yeah. You know, yeah, so yeah. they finally just let me in. And then mm -hmm. I did research. So, uh, you know, it, it really taught me the value of life and how important it is to be present and live every day because you don't know how much time you have. Mm -hmm. I can tell you right now that it was 30 years ago they gave me six months to live and I'm still mm -hmm. kicking. Girl, come on. Somebody. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we are inspired already. You've only spoken for two minutes. I love it. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us today. And we really appreciate your presence. And we know now after hearing your story that there was a bigger plan in place for you. Yeah. Um, what led you to explore the connection between plant-based diets and healing lupus? Uh, falling in love 
So uh, I wish I could say that it was all my scientific background. People ask me that all the time. How did you know there was a connection? I didn't know and I didn't look for it. Mm. I was a scientist and I followed what I was taught. So first I went through genetics and then I decided to be a medical doctor. And it was difficult. I mean, I I had to deal with lupus for all this time. And so by the time I got to medical school, I was having mini strokes. And so Mm. I was getting blood clots causing double vision. So I had to start injecting myself with blood thinners every day. Mm. But I just kept trucking because, again, Mm -hmm. every day I woke up and I was alive. It's a good day, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm, for sure. and I learned that from a Holocaust survivor mm-hmm. grandparents. You wake up, you're free and you're mm-hmm. alive is a good day. Go get it, <laughs> you know. So um, so I, I just kept going and I just wanted to live the best life I could live. I was going to love with all my heart. I was going to pursue everything I could do. I wanted to make an impact in the world and help people. Mm-hmm. So I decided to be a doctor. And right as I'm getting ready to graduate, I see this man who's in the studio. You guys can't see him <laughs> with the most beautiful. Look at those eyes. Those, he's looking at you with such admiration. He looks at me. I can't walk by him in a room without feeling those love arrows. And, and we're celebrating our 18 year anniversary coming that. up. Congratulations. Yes. But we fell in love very quickly. And I had to explain to this beautiful, amazing man. I mean, he is just the most brilliant, amazing man. And I had to explain to him that I have this disease mm-hmm. where, you know, I'm not going to live a long life. I'm going to become disabled. You'll have to take care of me when I'm disabled. This is what you're telling him in the beginning. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Well, no, no. After we found love. That's like I didn't, I don't go on a, a date. I didn't go on a date with a hot guy and say, Hey, listen, I got this disease. No, we talked about our favorite movies. We both love Spider-Man and the matrix. We talked about our favorite artists we, you know, we, no, we were having yeah. fun. But when it got serious, <laughs> which was only about a month later, he was talking about marriage. I had to tell him what he was signing up for mm-hmm. that. I'm not just this kind of bubbly fun person, but I'm dealing with a whole lot behind the scenes mm-hmm. that a lot of people never realized because I didn't, really hold on to it or express it. Mm-hmm. I just lived in pain, but I didn't, I didn't let it be a part of my consciousness, if you, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. So, yeah. Yeah. so I had to explain that it's actually more severe than you understand. He saw me give myself shots, but mm-hmm. he didn't know. So I said, I've been told I could never have kids or could kill me mm. that I, uh, you know, that I am going to be disabled. I'd be lucky to live past my forties. Mm. And uh, so I understand if you want to be, if you don't want to pursue this and he just took the slightest moment and he looked at me and he said, I would rather have a short life with you than a lifetime with anybody else. Girl. And I'll just make it the best damn life you could ever have. Mm. And I said, okay, let's get married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I got one. I got- <laughs> you know, because I, and I talk to patients sometimes who feel guilty mm-hmm. be, being chronically ill and having a partner. Mm-hmm. And I said, no, you don't get to choose who someone loves. Mm-hmm. That's for them. Mm-hmm. You know, and if he wanted to love me, I was all for it. Open for it. Yes. So good. that's what led to my healing actually mm-hmm. was not, well, not just the falling in love. I was in love and still sick, mm-hmm. but my husband's uh, obsession. He mm-hmm. also went to the same college as me. We went to Carnegie Mellon, which is where obsessive scientists go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he wanted to learn what is the optimal diet for human metabolism. It really upset him that scientists knew exactly what every creature is supposed to eat except mm-hmm. humans. Mm-hmm. There's mm-hmm. a debate about our own species. Mm -hmm. You want to know what a koala eats? We got that. You Mm -hmm. want to know what a cat's supposed to eat? We got that. Humans, I don't know, high carb, low carb, biodiversity, whatever that, you know, so it just really made him mad that you couldn't get, here's the best way to lose fat. Here's the best way to gain muscle. So he became obsessed with looking at how nutrition affects cellular function for metabolism, for fat loss. So when we decided to get married, I wanted to look good for my wedding like every other person. Sure. Mm-hmm. And I was on the perfect diet to be overweight and sick, which is hospital food. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's very good for hospital business. Mm-hmm. So I had a long white coat covered all the, all the lumps, you know? And I said, you know, I want to, I want to be on your program. So he first assured me he didn't want it to be a trap. He's like, you're beautiful. I'm like, mm-hmm. no, no, no. I mean it. Like I, mm-hmm, <laughs> not, mm-hmm. I just want you to help me out. So he tried to put me on his program, which he had to make adjustments for because I was a vegetarian. So I ate tons of dairy and eggs, but I, I didn't need any meat. So he made some adjustments where he put me on only the components like high amounts of vegetables and omega threes and water, all the things that became our goodbye lupus protocol. And what happened was it worked. Mm-hmm. I went from a size 11 to a size three in three months. Mm-hmm. I was ripped at my wedding. But the other thing that I lost was the lupus. All my lupus Girl, markers went away. My blood clots disappeared. My kidneys went back to normal, mm. which had been, I still had kidney problems for 12 years at this point. And all of it went away. Hold on, hold on. Yes, we yes. got Dr. Brooke Goldner <laughs> in the building with us today with this amazing story to start. And we're going to come back and talk about how this program helped you heal from lupus. Yep. Wow. Can't wait to have you back in just a moment. 